Conference championships and what a pair of teams we have today because Whitehall comes in as a team that everyone figured would do it all year. Stroudsburg, well, people thought they might, but they proved them wrong last year, proved them right this year. And, and Bob, one thing about the Mounties, Whitehall sort of controlling uh, their division pretty well this year, as you mentioned, but the Mounties, on and off ball club. We saw them against Pleasant Valley, didn't look like a championship team. Came back in the playoff, wow, just turned it around. The player I can't wait to see today is Mary Lisicki. She really gets it going for this Whitehall team. Their leading scorer, just about 14 points a game, first team Mountain Valley Conference. Mary can light it up, but she can also get everybody else involved. Yeah, she's the floor leader, Bob. Not only can she score, averaging, as you said, close to 14 points a game, but she's dangerous with the basketball. Why? Such an effective passer. Can distribute the basketball, makes everybody on her club look better. Coach Todd Payton calls Jen Clock his X factor. She had 12 points, 12 rebounds in the first meeting. This is a girl who can do it shooting, scoring, rebounding, and defending. And put an asterisk on rebounding because that's going to be a key for the Zephyrs today and the Mounties. But the girl that may be most effective under the boards for them is an aggressive Jen Klopp. She can hit the board strong. She's very effective under there. On the other side, we have two players who are either at or near a thousand points. Cindy Crowell needs just 10 points tonight to gain a thousand. This is a rugged player who can also do it inside and outside. Yeah, she's a, a common combination player plays the perimeter shoots the ball very well can hit threes for you but also goes into the paint very effective under the boards and they're going to need the boards from Kroll tonight but Bob let's remember Ryan Levine she needed a thousand and a uh, two games ago against Pleasant Valley. They were concentrated on Ryan. Coach Brian says tonight, uh-uh, those points are going to come. We're going to play our game. That's right, and uh, we talked about Ryan Levine being an inside-outside player as well. She will lead this crew in, in spirit as well. She's a vocal leader, and she's a good shooter. And remember, both Kroll and Levine being seniors, they're in a championship game. Their goals were set last summer when they went to those clinics and camps, preseason, practices all year. One goal they're at it tonight is league championship. Bob, in the first matchup, it was all Whitehall. And really, the thing that killed Stroudsburg was that press. I mean, Stroudsburg just didn't know what they were doing at that point. It was a game that Ed Branion was not happy the way they played. He has to find a way to break that press, and that takes us to today's Dr. Bob's board. That's correct, Bob. And the trouble was with pressure by Whitehall. You're definitely going to see pressure by the Whitehall Zephyrs tonight. But how Coach Branion tells me they're going to beat that pressure, one of the ways, let's look at the offensive set that he'll use against the Zephyr pressure. We call it a pain ton, Todd Payton, their coach in the Mounties attack. And that pressure is so effective. Let's see how the Mounties can beat it. They're going to have Cindy Kroll taking the ball out of bounds. This is a necessity, Coach Brannion says. She has full control of that. She knows how to handle the basketball. Then you have Ryan Levine on one wing, Nancy Gulick on the other. What happens here, Gulick will set a screen for Levine. Let's watch for that. Levine comes off, gets the inbounds pass from Kroll. Kroll on the fly up this part of the court, but watch out. Here's where you want to beat the pressure, right there. That's Lindsay Austin, six-footer. She's going to break into this open area, look for the pass to Austin, have triangles going up court. That's how Coach Ed Brannon would like to beat the Zephyr pressure tonight, Bob. He wants no part of a 57-39 game like he had last time. The team really didn't shoot that well either. And, you know, Todd Payton before the game had also mentioned today that the pressure is on his team because Stroudsburg knows they have to do something different, do something better. His team may be a little complacent after an 18-point win. Yeah, and you know, the Mounties too, the bomb pressure of a championship season. The Zephyrs, of course, playing good all year, have to perform tonight also. This is key. This is championship time. We're excited. All right, today it is the Mountain Valley Conference Girls Basketball Championship. Stroudsburg and Whitehall, the starting lineups and the opening tap are coming up. This is the sticker at a typical used car lot. It gives some useful information, but there's one very important thing missing. 
the price. Here at the Scott Lot, you'll always find at least 150 factory certified cars and trucks. Each one includes a rigid inspection and a bumper to bumper warranty. But best of all, the price is always clearly marked. And it's probably the best price you'll find in the valley. Finally, a car lot made for browsing. Scott Lot on the Lehigh Street Auto Mile. Here at C.J. Wagner's, only the finest materials are used to make the Lehigh Valley's most attractive trophies and awards. Using the most modern state-of-the-art computerized engraving system, we can digitize your custom logo and transfer that onto any award you choose. Featuring the personalized service that has become a trademark, the experts at C.J. Wagner's can help you award, promote, or feature your group through thousands of items. Visit the area's leading trophy, awards, and ad specialty company, and we also offer the finest in bowling supplies. Fast, exciting, family entertainment, professional basketball, Stabler Arena, the Pennsylvania Valley Dogs. 15 home games starting Saturday, April 29th, featuring head coach Daryl Dawkins. For season ticket information or group outings, call 610-250-9800. This afternoon, Whitehall and Stroudsburg for the Mountain Valley Conference Girls Championship. A pair of Whitehall and Stroudsburg teams. Don't forget immediately following, we will have the Boys Championship live from Liberty's Memorial Gym. And we're set for tonight's starting lineups. Stroudsburg will be the visiting team, both in the girls and boys games. And for the Mounties, it'll be Cindy Crowell, a 5'9'' senior, as we mentioned, needing just 10 points for 1,000. Nancy Gulick gets it started, 5'5'' five five senior, number 12, 45 three-pointers on the season. Ryan Levine already has her 1,000. In fact, she has 1,034. She's a 5'8'' senior, number 22. Nora Fenner will do a lot of work inside. She's a 5'8'' senior, wearing number 14, and also doing a lot of the work inside, Lindsey Austin, a six-foot junior, number 33. Ed Branion is in his eighth year as head coach of the Lady Mounties. Whitehall will come in 20 and 4, Stroudsburg 20 and 5. And for Whitehall, Jen Wine will start at the point to 5'7", senior number 13. Number 23, the girl we've talked about, Mary Lasicki, a 5'8", junior. She'll play a little bit of point, most of the two spots. Number 41 is Amy Saganowicz, a 5'8", junior. Number 44, Jen Clock, who will probably defend against Crowell, a 5'10", senior. And Megan Balliot, who will work inside a 5'10 junior, number 51. Todd Payton is the head coach in his first year. Here's your lineups. Gulick, Fenner, Levine, Crowell, and Austin. Wine, Lasicki, Saganowicz, Clock, and Balliot for Whitehall. 
And Bob, notice the, the size uh, matchups there with both clubs. Good matchups, size wise, both clubs very aggressive defensively, very aggressive offensively. Watch the battle under the boards. As we mentioned, back on February 4th, Whitehall beat Stroudsburg 57-39. It was 39-14 at the half in that one. And Bob, how key is officiating in the big games? When you have two aggressive teams like these two teams are, officiating plays a key part in this major game. But I'm telling you one thing, these officiate, officials know this. Watch them, let them play, and rightly they should let them play. Will be Balliot and Austin jumping center. Stroudsburg in their maroon, Whitehall in gold, and we are underway. Mounties moving right to left. Gulick will set things up for Stroudsburg. A man to man defense by the Zephyrs. Austin back rims it, and Jen Clock has her first rebound. 12 and 12 for Clock. Points and rebounds in the first meeting. Here's Wine for three. Well, we talked about Lasicki. You mentioned Clock before the game. Failed to mention a Jen Wine. Wine, she's very effective from the perimeter. Scott report, she hits a good percentage from out there. A little inside screening by the Mounties there. Levine on the drive, comes up a little bit wide, will get her own rebound, but throw it away. And Mary Lasicki is in the scorebook with a steal. She's also in the scorebook with a turnover. Here comes Crowell back the other way. Has Fenner inside. Fenner has the first two for Stroudsburg. And great look by Crowell. Why, why that was effective. Gave the look to the right side, then bang, quickly into Fenner. Fenner, sort of an unsung hero for Stroudsburg. Doesn't get a lot of the ink, but does a lot of work defensively. Here's Lasicki from downtown. She averages 14 points a game and has her first three. No real pressure on Lasicki that time. Mounted defense must come out, play, play her tighter. Gulick outside thought about that three. Here's Crowell. We talked about in the pregame how she cannot really force things to get that thousand. It's Clock with a rebound. Whitehall tries to run. Wine has to run it down. Clock from downtown. Got it. It's going to be a two. Scored a two for Jen Clock, averaging ten and a half a game. Clock noted for inside play, strong player at 5'10", also can hit the perimeter shot. Mounty defense has to be more aggressive. Levine for three, and she comes up short. Bob, something we didn't talk about, I'm sure Stroudsburg has never played here in the afternoon. This gym, unlike others, has windows behind the baskets. How much of a different look will that be looking up at the basket? And there's no question, there's more glare with this afternoon daylight, Bob, and that is a problem or could be a problem for both clubs. Do doesn't seem to be a problem thus far for the Zephyrs, but uh, could be a problem as far as shooting from, uh, from any distance. Austin got a hand on that one. Valley had had a second chance, and here come the Mounties. Bullock with a three on two. And the Mounties will have to reset here. Yeah, it looked like Gulick had Fenner open to her left side, but Mounties decided to go into their offensive set. Strong move there by Clock. Clock up ahead of the pack. They find her. She throws it too hard. And here comes Levine the other way. Looked like Gulick wanted to square up for that three. Yeah, flashing in and out of that high post area, the Mounties offense, but I think what they have to do is get more the, the ball into the low paint area, and I think the, the key person in today's game, especially if they don't hit a perimeter shot like that, may be Lindsey Austin. Mm -hmm. This one will stay with Stroudsburg. There's Mary Lasicki, 13.8 points a game, eight rebounds a game. Had 22 points, eight rebounds, with four three-pointers in the first meeting. Now, anyone we've talked to throughout the year can't say enough about her play that is Mary Lasicki. And, Bob, one thing we understand, 
very unselfish player, even though she's the high score on the Zephyr team, rather distribute the basketball. Uh, rather give the ball up than take the shot. Lindsey Austin goes over the back of Balliot and picks up the first foul of the afternoon. We're this close to saying good morning today, Bob. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how many times. I don't know if I've ever uh, been at a basketball game at 12 noon, Bob. This is a little <laughs> unusual. Rebound by Austin. And here come the Mounties. Brown trying to push it up. The Mounties definitely want to get it across half court as quickly as possible because of that full court press by Whitehall. But not a lot of movement. Very little movement, if any, in this Mountie offense. There you see... Crawl with a good move into the paint. But Bob, I think we, have, we need a little more motion, making it easy for this Zephyr defense. Clock gets called for the first Zephyr foul. Levine. Didn't get a good handle on that, couldn't set up for that three. There's Crowell, and she has it tipped by Clock and pulled away by Valiant. Good defense there by Clock, backing off when Crawl had it further out on the perimeter beyond the three-point area. So she took the one, two dribbles in. Clock came up and her made a nice block. Gulick picks up her first personal, and it will send Clock to the line. There you, there you see Clock with a strong move toward the bucket. Looked like uh, Ryan got smacked in the eye there. She seems to be okay right now. And Bob, if you're Coach Ed Brannion at this time, one thing you didn't want to have happen is to dig a hole early and be down by seven here with 328 left in this first quarter. It's gonna be tough to make up the difference on this Zephyr club. Clock hits a pair. Halloran has checked into the game for Stroudsburg. Crowd. Thought about that three, here's Fenner in the corner. The Mounties just have not found their range here. Yeah, and Bob, depending on the perimeter shot, unable to get the ball inside, did that a couple times. I think they have to look into the paint more. And Fenner will be called for the foul, and it will send Lisicki to the line. And you see the difference in offenses. The Zephyr's very aggressive going to the basket, run their offense, watch it here. Lisicki takes it to the bucket, is fouled. Why aggressive with the offensive move? Haven't seen that out of the Mounties thus far. Another Lisicki playing in Europe, I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think that Mary could end up being the best of the bunch. Now, the Division One prospect here as a junior. Has the potential, has the, uh, the skills. One of two for Mary Lasicki. And it is a nine point lead for Whitehall, and here is that pressure. Lasicki with the steal, and she'll go to the line. Levine will pick up the foul. We chronicled it in the pregame. The pressure killed Stroudsburg in the first game, and it hurts them here. Lined up just as we had a diagram to see it here, but you don't force the pass. Good idea to get it into the center area there, but the forcing the pass. Hold on to it or take it on the dribble if you have to. Don't like to do it. Keep it off the floor against the pressure, but if you're forced to, put it on the floor to get out of the uh, uh, the trap. And as we brag on Lasicki, she's only one of three from the line. Again, one of two for Lasicki at the line. Five points for Mary, and the lead is 10. And here's another tip away by Lasicki. A good anticipation by Lasicki that time seeing the ball come into that center area. Let's watch it again. Here's the screen trying to get free. Center area can't hold on to it. Mount and turn it over again. And Clock hits from the baseline in six, and Ed Brannion comes leaping off the bench for a timeout. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Bray a little disappointed, Bob, because talking to him after their last game and before this game, mentioned the pressure of the Zephyrs. This is what hurt them in their first meeting, in their last meeting. He said it will not hurt them. This time, we're prepared for it, 
and I'll tell you what, very different when you play in the game itself, and particularly a championship game. Yeah. And the thing Whitehall has done has been to shoot well. And I don't want to harp on the point too much, but you know the brightness in here and the bright windows behind the basket could have an effect. Of course, both teams have to play with it. Sometimes some adjust better than others. They try and drop it inside for Haller, and it goes off her leg. And the Zephyrs with a chance to increase this 11-0 run. Now, I don't see a lot of movement offensively again by the Mounties. Uh, you're playing into the hands of this man-to-man -man defense. I have to set up more screens, be more effective that way, look to the paint, perimeter, kick it out. But we need a lot more motion offensively. Lasicki from just inside the line. It's Levine on the rebound. And here comes Gulick to the front court. Gulick pulls up, misses the jumper, and it's one and done here for Stroudsburg. And that's exactly another thing. The perimeter shooting. No one's under the boards. All gold shirts under there have great position on that man-to-man -man defense. Good blockout position. So the Zephyrs have been controlling their defensive board. Lasicki wow. for three. Wow. Her second three-pointer. And the lead is 15. You know, you, you, you just feel that she could be more than a 14-point score. What a technique from downtown. Katie Meltzer in the game for Stroudsburg, and she has it tipped and stolen, or at least nearly stolen by Hartman. Osha Eisenberg, 21, a 5'8 junior, checks into the Mountie lineup. You now, Bob, too, the nice thing about a, a player like uh, Mary Lisicki, people recognize what a fine player she is for her skill. Not only her offensive ability, if she looked to the bucket and took, let's say, uh, uh, probably could take twice as many shots as she has this year. We'll watch the drive here by Levine to the bucket to pick up the foul. That was a good aggressive move. Need to see more of that from the Mounties. But what I was going to say, she's so effective with passing, distributing the basketball, her skills off the dribble. Everybody recognizes this girl's just a fine player. That is Mary Lasicki. There's another fine player, though, we're looking at there. That's Ryan Levine, 1,000-point score for the Mounties. And a three-point play for Ryan. This team shoots very well from the free throw line. Ryan at... 81%. And that cuts the lead to 12. This one knocked away by Levine and taken by Eisenberg. Fenner for Crowell in the corner. She'll launch the three and hit. Well, I was going to say, maybe set up their offense, look for the good look as the momentum swings toward the mountain side, making a run at these Zephyrs at this point. But uh-uh. Take it from the perimeter when yeah, you're warm. Her 35th of the season inside Hartman has her first basket. Janine Hartman for two. And Bob, even though they didn't hit the perimeter shot early, that is the Mounties, maybe shows a little confidence in their shooting abilities like that. Crowd for three, no. They fight for the rebound. Eisenberg saves it. Fenner to the floor, and then Levine finishes. And talking about the importance of their offensive board, that is the Mount is getting killed early by the Zephyrs under that board, but shows the hustle that time. Fenner with a good job. Lasicki drops it for Balliot, and a 20-second timeout for Todd Payton. A yeah, good call by Coach Paint and the run by the uh, Mounties coming back at his Zephyrs want to get them under control because this is a club, I said it's hard when you dig a hole against a Zephyr club like this, but if they get warm for the perimeter, things can happen. Look at that look from Jen Clock. We talked about what Clock can do, shooting the ball and rebounding the ball. How about passing the ball? And Stroudsburg with some hustle in there. Nora Fenner we talked about a moment ago, Bob. The unsung hero right. going to the floor to keep it alive. And, you know, Bob, we always talk about in the big game, there's always that other name. You know, you mentioned the names all through the high scores, guy, uh, players that do the job for you, but there's always that other name. Fenner could be one of those. A bit of a wet spot on the floor right now. They're always looking for someone in the big game to step up. I know you, you know your, your key players are going to do it, those that you relied on all year, but you're looking for that other one. And Stroudsburg should be encouraged by something that happened next town over the other night. Here's a nice inbound to Balliot to 
finish the first two valiant the esu men went up on kutztown 17 to nothing and led by 19 early in the second half and lost by two to kutztown so stroudsburg can't feel that they're out of this ball game you know you never feel you're out of the game of basketball why because you get warm and things start clicking and going your way you saw it there by gulick nice shot there and Mount is definitely on a run coming at these Zephyrs in the latter part of this first quarter. That is the end of the first quarter. Whitehall opens up a big lead. Stroudsburg chips away. It's 21-12 after one. Are you an athlete if you only play for bragging rights? What if you inherit your uniform? Are you an athlete if your toughest competition is yourself? What if your role model doesn't even play a sport? Or if you don't play sports at all, anymore? Are you an athlete? Always. Rural athletic, durable clothing, made for the long run. Available at Bethlehem Sporting Goods. Stroudsburg has chipped back into it, and you see by that, Bob, it seems they found that range. Yeah, no question about it, and this is basically a perimeter-oriented team, and if they get warm from out there, anything can happen. Mary Lasicki leading all scorers with eight points. Clock has it swatted out of bounds by Austin. And, and see what offense will do for defense. Sometimes you talk about defense creating offense, when they get warm offensively, builds up momentum, emotions evolve, and it helps defensively. You saw it there. Wine from the corner, got it. Wine with five points. Austin to the other end, has it tipped away. Girls to the floor. No dainty ladies here. And Bob, when you've played the club before, that is if you're Coach Branion or you have scouting reports on the Zephyr Club, of course, it's always mentioned that Lasicki can hit the perimeter, clock, can score for you offensively, but you forget about wine. Can't do that. The girl can hit. You saw it again. Austin posting up, tried to find Fenner. Here's Gulick to clean it up and hit. Nancy Gulick with four. <laughs> Gulick at double digits for the year. Shows you why. 12 points a game. Had 11 in a 67-51 one win over Pleasant Valley the other day in a Mountain Division playoff. And it looks like the Mountains have picked up that defense a little bit more here. Well, what they're doing now, Bob, they're in a zone of defense trying to shift quickly, but I don't know. That was a, a good look that the Zephyrs got against that zone, moving the ball quickly, making it shift, uh, and then beating the shift in the zone. Sicky picks up her first personal. That's the third on Whitehall. Yeah, Gulick with a nice play there, uh, going to the bucket strong, using the left hand. Gulick misses the front end, an 80% shooter. There's a guy who's done a great job for the Mount. He's a great guy also, Coach Ed Branion, and uh, was a little disappointed in the, in the league play with the loss at Pleasant Valley, and uh, boy, just turned things around in that playoff game. He let the girls know it, and they <laughs> responded. He, yeah, I was a little upset. We tried to talk to him after that game, and uh, wanted to get out of that gym fast. I had a, I had a few things to think about. Looking for a scene here. Drops it in Balliot. Hartman. Down to the floor they go again. And the alternate possession will stay with Whitehall. Yeah, what, the, what that zone has done is taken the uh, Zephyrs out of their aggressive offensive play. Uh, kind of remaining static offensively, moving the ball rather than bodies there. This one goes off of Wine, picked up by Gulick. Some of the Whitehall fans thought there should have been a foul. Stroudsburg looking to make it six, maybe five with a three here. Levine goes baseline, double covered. Fenner is fouled from behind by Cluck. 
That'll be the second on Jen. Yeah, what the mound is doing now, double low post with Austin on one side of the low uh, paint and uh, Venner on the opposite. What made that play, however, was a great baseline drive by Levine. When she felt the double team, Fenner steps back and Levine finds Fenner. That's just good ball movement and uh, movement without the basketball by the Mounties. Much more effective offensively now. There hits the first. How about this free throw style, Bob? Steps back about two, three feet. Not one that uh, my old friend, uh, the master of the shop, uh, Hank Slider, used to teach. I don't think he would be quite uh, acceptable when he, or he wouldn't accept that type of uh, technique. But if it works, you do it. There's a six point lead and a 9 4 Stroudsburg run. This one kept alive by Jen Wine. Here's Lasicki from just outside the free throw line, and she hits. Lasicki gets the bounce. She's our first player in double figures. And you talk about touch and shooting touch. You saw it demonstrated there. Why off to the left? You say it should not go, but the soft touch rolls around the iron and in. Called a shooter's touch. Ooh. Levine on the drive. Uses the scoop. You know, I wonder if in that time out, Ed Brandon said, Ryan, start to play tough because she has in the last few minutes. I'm sure that Coach uh, Ed Brandon said something in there and he wanted his club to be more aggressively on the boards and offensively. And I think it did make a change or it did make a, it did have the effect after that timeout. Fenner will pick up her second personal. That's the fifth on the Mounties. And it will send Megan Valiant to the line. We'll mention Mountain Valley Conference. And you talk about one of those players that doesn't get a lot of recognition, but is so valuable to a ball club. It's uh, the girl on the line there. That is 5'10 junior Megan Valiant. So effective, particularly in the paint and off the boards for these Zephyrs. She was 10 of 12 from the line against Northampton. A 53-42 win in Whitehall's last game. Crowd for three, came up way short on that one. I don't know if Lasicki had gotten a hand on it. Austin with the follow, and it's Wine with the rebound. Tough to beat these Zephyrs back. Bounty's trying to get into that offensive transition quickly. Lasicki travels. Change in defenses, affected by Coach Abranian there, and uh, has created a few turnovers and uh, has helped these Mounties come back with these efforts. Halloran and Melser return for the Mounties. One thing they've done effectively too, Bob, I don't think they're, they might be a little anxious in their shot selection thus far, but they've been chipping at that lead, just taking one goal at a time. But you can't do that if you want to come back, turning it over against that pressure again. Lasicki shot rims out, Wine is fouled by Meltzer. That'll be Katie's first. The sixth on the Mounties. One try, two tries by Balliot, and she'll go back to the line. And Bob, that should not happen. It happened before inbounds play. Easy to defense, particularly when you have Megan just sitting in that Megan value. That is, there she is on the foul line ice, sitting in that low paint. Someone's responsibility is directly to value it. They're failing to pick her up on that inbounds play. Well, after having a great night, and the other night against Northampton, she struggles from the line today. But you, know, you know what it is, too, with that defense is the inbounds. I mean, you have to be aware where all players are all the time, particularly in that close. And you want to communicate if someone to my right would see that she's open, has to tell me, get back, someone pick her up. Lack of communication is, the, is Jen, the, what happens in that regard. Jen Wine picks up her second. Number 13, Jen Wine, her second, the team of fifth. Just the fifth on the Zephyrs. As we come to the halfway mark of the second quarter, 25-19. Whitehall with the lead. Halloran on the drive, uses the left hand. Kraut fights wow. the rebound away, and a jump ball is called before she can get it away. 
Yeah, you saw an over-aggressive Zephyr a defense gave Halloran the open to the baseline. Looked like she had the layup, misses it with the left hand. But look at the battling inside by Crawl. Levine Hush. drops it in for Eisenberg, and she'll go to the line. But I think definitely is the, the difference of being number one aggressive, more aggressive defense by the Mounties in the second quarter, and also aggressiveness, aggressiveness offensively, going to the basket stronger, and then on a miss, really pounding the boards. Eisenberg hits the first, her first point of the day. Which is just about two points, but will come in and give you about three rebounds a game. Decent rebounding numbers off the bench. One of two, and Levine tough in there for the rebound, and she'll go to the line. Wow, you wonder, you don't have position inside on the missed foul. That is, the gold shirts have that position. Levine in that second spot, but what gets you the basketball? A long bound, that's one thing, but aggressiveness. Levine wanted the basketball more. Whitehall calls a timeout. It is a full timeout. Todd Payton has seen his large lead cut to five here, and uh, Stroudsburg starting to do a little bit more underneath the boards, Bob. Early we mentioned it was one and done, one and done. Now they seem to be hitting the offensive boards. Yeah, and, and also defensively, Bob. I think the change in defense by Coach Ed Branion kind of took the, took them out of their normal offense or the offense that they were so successful with earlier. But look at that strong drive there by uh, Levine. Why is she a thousand point scorer? That's one of the reasons. This kid is so tough in there with the basketball and you saw a rebound so well earlier. Just a very strong player. Well, you can split this half into you know, two parts. You have a 19-8 Whitehall lead, and then you have a Stroudsburg 12-6 run. The, big, the, the key, too, though, Bomb, is taking care of the basketball. What hurt them earlier was that pressure defense by the Zephyrs creating a lot of turnovers on the Mounties' part, and they kind of had it under control there in the second quarter. Levine at the line. Has the first one roll off. Well, I, I might have seen her close her eyes. I don't know if you noticed that. I don't know if that's a prayer, a prayer or a part of her technique. But let's look at it again. Ryan, a little unusual with technique from the foul line. And his eyelids seem to shut right before she shoots. There it goes. How about that? Concentration. Comes up short on the second. That's a little different, right? <laughs> Visualizing. <laughs> That's it. Mally's trying to jump out to the trap. Yeah, see how uh, ecstatic that the offense is now by the Zephyrs, trying to beat it with ball movement. Long skip, bounce pass there. Almost picked up. Wine drops it inside, and Valiant will go back to the line. But they move it well to find Megan Valiant inside. Good bounce pass. That would be the only type of pass that could have gotten the Valiant. A lot of red shirts, maroon shirts around the, the wine there. But effectively, she gets it in the Valiant. That's a nice play. Valiant continues to struggle from the line. Yeah, what you want to do against that zone, the Zephyrs find the seams as Wine did there, and then the zone tends to converge to stop basketball. Three maroon shirts converge under that time. Someone has to be open. Must be aware, Valiant was that time. Wine, again, did that fine job. There's that pressure, and the Mountie's able to break it this time. Gulick. Says, no, Cindy, let's reset this thing. Cindy Crowell, so far not forcing, as we saw Levine do against Pleasant Valley about a week and a half ago. About two weeks ago, actually. One week? One week ago. <laughs> There's been so much basketball in the last week here. So much meaningful basketball. And I'll tell you, we love it. I mean, all these games uh, just enjoy the competition, the fine skills demonstrated by both the, uh, the guys and the gals. 
This will send Gulick to the line. The foul will go on Janine Hartman, so that is her second. A little uh, different offensive uh, setup by the Mounties this time down the court, and a uh, little more motion with high-low situations as far as post situation is concerned in that offensive set. Freed this girl from the perimeter, that is Gulick saw the opening, went strong to the bucket. Gulick has a bit of a strange free throw shot, but uh, it is effective at 80%. Yeah, you don't argue with success. Of course, you don't like to teach certain techniques, but uh, if they fall like they do there for Gulick, why argue? Why change? It is a four-point game. Hudak, Melissa Hudak for three. Well, they can all hit it from the outside. This time it's Hudak. The zone falls back on the big people, particularly Ballard. I think they want to protect that paint with Ballard back there. But Hudak hits it. That'll bring the zone out. Crowell will go to the line. But notice how much more aggressive the Mounties are. This time it's Crowell. Look at that quick first step and the penetration. Didn't see that early in the game offensively by the Mounties. Bob, seemed like they were content to sit at the perimeter even against that man-to-man -man early and depend on that outside shot. Just wasn't going. Changed the offensive set that is Coach Brain. And I think with a few words said, hey, you got to go to the basket, have the outside take it. But if it's open in there, you've got to push it to the iron. A pair for Cindy Crowell. She is an 87% shooter. And, that, and that's what that type of offense will do also. You know, you, you get maybe a better look in closer, but you pick up a lot of fouls on the opposition by being more aggressive. Back to a five-point game. Fenner, boy, I thought she had tipped it off of wine. But Fenner gets a hand in there to knock it out of bounds. Lisicki, they've pretty much uh, quieted her a bit. And another swap by Austin. Yeah, six foot Lindsay Austin, only a junior. Great timing there to knock it away. Levine drops it for Crowell. In the lane, Cindy has it go off, go off the back of the rim. And it's pulled away by Lisicki. Mary will hit the baseline and head back out. Wine in the lane, lost the handle, was able to get it to Lasicki for three. It comes off the side of the rim, right there is Balliot for the follow. Good position by Megan Balliot to put it back up and in. Position is blocking out. Balliot did it well that time. You work on that fundamentally throughout the year, preseason, summer, what have you, it pays off. Crowell off the screen, gets the bounce. Cindy Crowell with seven. She needs three for a thousand. Very difficult shot by Crowell on the run, falling away from the bucket. Tough to get the soft touch as she did on a shot like that. Back to a five-point game, and it looks as though Whitehall will take the last shot here. It's in the hands of Mary Lisicki, team leader. Best ball handler out there. She's going to get the offense started as this clock works down. Down to a half minute here in the first half. Good look at Mary there. Oh, I'd like to know what's going on in that little line there as she looks over the defense. Wine. Hudak, the clutch shooter of this team, comes up short. Fenner bounces it on the baseline. So Whitehall will have 7.7 .7 seconds to take another shot. Yeah, uh, Mounties might have had a chance. Shot taken a little early has left a lot of time left on the clock. But Zephyrs get it back. Valiant, Lasicki. Hudak for three, comes up short again. The follow inside is no good by Valiant, and that is the end of the half. Almost got an easy one, and it's Valiant got the bound again, must block out. No Mountie near her, shouldn't be uh, body contact at all times, particularly on Megan Valiant. Well, the Zephyrs have to be happy with the lead. The Mounties have to be happy to have battled back into this one. No question about that, we see it here. 
That's the shot by Kral. That's that fadeaway. What a touch she got off of that. But the Mounties dug themselves a hole early, but came back strong. It's a ball game, Bob. 31-26, Whitehall at the half. There's a reason overhead door of Allentown is called the original. That's because we're the leader in the industry. Our superior construction, innovative technology, and professional sales and service set us apart. Our customers ask that they can have beauty and still have security. Once an overhead door, the answer is yes. Now that's original. The genuine, the original overhead door of Allentown. Look for us in the yellow pages under doors. Other carpets might look like Shawmark Anything Goes, but not for long. Unlike other brands, Anything Goes comes with a 10-year warranty against matting and crushing, even on heavy traffic areas like stairs and hallways. The question is not how the carpet looks when you buy it, but how it will look 10 years down the road. With Anything Goes, the answer is beautiful. Shawmark, a name you can stand on. Visit our new expanded showroom on North 3rd Street in Whitehall. I remember my mom going to Walter's Pharmacy. Now I go. Walter's fills my prescription needs quickly. When I can't get away, Walter's comes to me with free delivery. Walter's Pharmacy, making life easier through genuine care since 1937. Walter's Pharmacy, 401 North 17th Street in the Allentown Medical Center. The sounds of decades past will resonate through Symphony Hall as an oldies concert takes center stage Saturday, February 26th, beginning at 8.30 p.m. Featuring Gary Lewis and the Playboys, who edged out the Beatles to top the charts with this diamond ring in 1965. Mark Lindsay, the original lead singer of the group Paul Revere and the Raiders. And Mitch Ryder, whose band the Detroit Wheels served as the musical bridge between the Motown Soul Factory and the rock and roll that roared out of Detroit in the 60s. Concert tickets are $30 and $35 and can be purchased at the Allentown City Hall and Oldies 99 FM. Welcome back to Liberty's Memorial Gym, along with Bob Milkvey. I'm Bob Capasso. Glad to have you along on both Blue Ridge and Service Electric live today for the Mountain Valley Championships. Right now, Whitehall with the lead at the half. Bob, a tale of really two parts of that half. The big Whitehall run to start this game, and Stroudsburg battling back, using some defense, and finally finding their range. Yeah, and I think early, of course, the pressure. We talked about that in pregame. Pressure hurt the Mounties. Found the secret to combating that defense, lessen their turnovers in the second quarter, made a difference. And the aggressiveness, you know, these Mounties are a strange ball club, Bob. You know, they come into this season, play great at times, and then go flat suddenly. And I think Coach Brannion saw it coming in that first quarter. Called that timeout, and it made a difference. That flat club was one he didn't want to see. He saw his club as that second quarter went on. And you can just tell what he said in that timeout, too, because as soon as they came out of that timeout, you saw Ryan Levine go strong to the basket, something she likes to do, and maybe something she wasn't doing in the early part of the half. Yeah, they, they weren't a effective from the perimeter. They looked for the perimeter shot. They are good perimeter shooters, but it wasn't going for them. They weren't going to the basket at all. And this is one other thing I think that Coach Ed Brannion said to him in that timeout. Hey, doesn't go from the perimeter. You have it. Take your look. If it falls, fine. If it doesn't, we've got to make uh, get some action started. Look inside. You don't have it there. Hey, take it on the dribble. And that's what they were doing in that second quarter. How about Mary Lasicki? She has impressed me. Oh, no question about it. And and what's impressive about her, Bob, is what we were told before the game. That is, she'll look for a shot. She's a very effective shooter, has a nice touch out there, but she likes to distribute the basketball. She keeps this offense going. She'll take her shot if she has it, but she's so effective with the pass. A couple of uh, notes that uh, Bob Mattson has given us, our stat man tonight. The rebounds go to Whitehall 13-9, to but another number he gave us, very interesting, the turnovers also go to Whitehall. Stroudsburg has uh, turned the ball over uh, uh, about five times, Whitehall 10, and 
that seems to have been what uh, got them back in the game. And their turnovers, Bob, are different because the turnovers early were uh, against the Mounties. Why? Because of pressure defense. They combated that in the second quarter. But the turnovers for Whitehall, different story. It's in the offensive set, mm -hmm. on the offensive end. The uh, defense, the half-court defense of the Mounties has created a lot of the Whitehall turnovers, and that makes the difference. So they're playing much more effectively defensively in that second quarter also. And there was a change there. They're man-to-man -man to start. Went into that zone much more effectively. You diagrammed it in the pregame, too, about how to break that press. Uh, there have been some times that Stroudsburg has done it well, some times that they have not. Yeah, and you can't force the pass against the pressure. I think they n knew what they wanted to do. We said, look for the middleman. We showed that in the in the pregame, a diagramming of it, how to beat the pressure. But you can't push it, and you can't force it. And what they were doing is trying to run the play. You know, you become automatic, you become programmed. Uh-uh, game of basketball. Must improvise at times. Kind of get off the, what you were taught to do, and that'll break it. And when they look for that, then you go back to the routine. So a big smile on Ed Ranyan's face at the end of that half. Obviously because of the specific play at the end of the half to uh, stop Whitehall from getting a last shot. But he's got to be happy. His team is in this after being down 17-2. to two. Well, Ed, Ed Brand, no question about it, very happy with the second quarter. But what club is going to come out for him in that third? And I think that's what he's concerned with. 31-26 to half. Whitehall leads. We'll be back with more in a moment. Let's go get your gold. You know it's always been the best. Let's go get your gold. The quality that beats the rest. They got cheese steaks, French fries. The famous Yako hot dog is known worldwide. Let's go get your gold. The secret sauce is one of a kind. Yako's an Allentown tradition. The hit comedy you can't refuse is in demand. I can't marry you because my father's head of the Graziosi crime family. I don't want to marry your father. Dead. <laughs> Try this. Forget about it. Hey, forget about it. Who's your friend? This is uh, Mickey Blue Eyes. I know. Do you love my What? Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. He, 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 he. <laughs> Mickey Blue Eyes is in demand. Pay-per-view for the demanding viewer. What do you see? They're not just houses. They're a reflection of your lifestyle. Spectrum Homes has designed a customer-oriented approach to home building, involving your unique ideas to create a home for the way you live. We offer homes with realistic estimates, top quality features, and exciting new home plans for the year 2000. Now what do you see? See yourself at Walnut Ridge in Whitehall. Visit our model home or see us at spectrumhomes.com. Golfers, want to save on the hottest new golf equipment? Don't miss Service Electric's Lehigh Valley Golf Expo. Save on equipment by Callaway, Ping, Titleist, Tommy Armour, Teardrop, and Odyssey. See equipment by Cleveland, Nancy Lopez, Cobra, TaylorMade, and MaxFly. Sharpen your game with tips from the area's leading golf instructors. Save on golf clothing by Cutter and Buck, Ashworth, Footjoy, and Dexter. Don't miss Service Electric's Lehigh Valley Golf Expo. See you there. Thirty-one twenty-six, Whitehall with the lead. We've seen some good play by these two people, Wine and Lasicki. Yeah, and Bob, that was early in the game. They were so effective from the perimeter. Change of defensive by the Mounties. You see it there again. Great perimeter shooting by the Zephyrs. Took him out to that big first quarter lead. Look at Lasicki there. What a great touch by that all-conference uh, player, Mary Lasicki. But the Mounties came back strong in that second quarter. There you see one of the reasons why that's Cindy Crow going after her thousand points. But notice the penetration did not have that early in the game when they dug that uh, uh, big hole that is the Mounties and they're going to the basket strong and great defensive play there. Yeah, Austin has three blocks on the afternoon. And, this and is, Whitehall leads it by five yeah, at the half. And Bob, this is what I was going to allude to too. You know, Austin may not give you a lot of points in there, but it's so effective defensively. Six footer. Uh, does her job in the paint uh, on the defensive end. First half numbers see Mary Lasicki leading all scorers with 10 points. 
And on the other side, some balanced scoring, seven apiece for Gulick, Levine, and Crowell. And this is how it's been basically through the year that it's those three players for the Mounties doing the bulk of the offensive work. I mean, the, the Mounties, the, the Mounties uh, uh, average about 54 points a game. These girls, three girls, give you about uh, 40 of those 54. Both teams shooting well from the field. Stroudsburg showing why they're such a good free throw shooting team. That's actually a little bit below their average. Whitehall opens with the basketball. Clock will step right up and put up the three. And off the rebound, we have a foul quickly on the Zephyrs. It will go against Hudak, so that is her second. It'll be Clock, Hudak, Lisicki, Wine, and Balliot in there for Whitehall. For Stroudsburg, it'll be Kral, Gulick, Levine, Austin, and Fenner, their starting five. Again, pressure by the Zephyrs. This is zone type pressure. Crawls in trouble. No, finds Fenner open on the sideline. Fenner drops it in for Austin. Well run play offensively for the Mountie. Well, it looked like Crawl was trapped in the backcourt. Almost a trap situation there, but gave up the ball quickly. Found Fenner on the uh, sideline, and then she looked up quick. That's good movement by the Mounties. This is as close as Stroudsburg has been since the beginning of the game. And a foul off the ball, an offensive foul called on Whitehall. It'll be on Hudak. Now see what happens as the Mounties ended that second quarter coming back and the momentum on the Mounties side. You see the good look inside here to Austin, the six-footer, nice and soft off the glass. But now it makes the, the Zephyrs think a little bit. You know, it makes them a little more concerned. Sees the Mounties uh, coming back up, pecking away at that lead and now st uh, start this uh, third quarter strong. So the Zephyrs mentally kind of get out of the game. Levine will go to the line. It is Wine who picks up her third personal. So three on Wine and three on Hudak for Whitehall. And two apiece on Hartman and Clock. On the other side, Ryan Levine and Nora Fenner have two fouls each. The only foul trouble for Stroudsburg. Yeah, talk about aggressive move. You saw Levine do it that time, and this is the type of player that she is. Bob, and one thing, too, even though it's early in this third quarter, again, momentum stays with the Mounties. Not a bad time. Not much time off the clock, but maybe not a bad time for Coach Payne to call a timeout and regroup his, his, his Zephyrs. You know, you say, well, there's only, you know, a minute gone in the in this quarter. We're going to let it play a little bit. But uh, -uh. you want to get this game under control. You're losing your lead. Get your, your players back together. So maybe not bad to call time right now. And the Mounties right now are sky high. Levine hits those two free throws and comes back cheering back the other way to her defensive position. Mount is extending that defense out to the perimeter, but good movement that time. Wine misses the three, and it's pulled away by Crown. That was a good look by Wine. A good ball movement by the Zephyrs freed her for that good look. Gulick for the lead. No. Fenner runs down the rebound. Well, things they weren't getting in the first quarter in particular were offensive boards. You see the Mount is, again, more effective uh, in that situation, too. There comes Clock to the front court. Amy Saganowicz. Balliot keeping the... That one goes up and over the back. I was about to wonder aloud where Lisicki was, and here she is. They're going to take some of the shooting edge again off the Zephyrs. That is a momentum... And the Mount is coming back at him and not as confident taking that perimeter shot. Crowell able to bring it back down. Here's Levine. Gulick for three. Fenner with another rebound. And the Mounties reset. Again, a chance to go ahead here. Crowell on the drive, uses glass, goes to the floor, and it's Clock with the rebound, and it looks like Balliot took a shot in the head, and they're gonna whistle this quickly here. Yeah, and a good stoppage of, of play here. Why? Because Balliot hit the floor hard, and I think she, she made contact with the floor. The head uh, kind of makes contact with the floor. You see it here. And that's always a questionable and hard call officiating part that is 
Was it the charge or was it a defensive call? Made no call there, but Balia did hit the floor hard. Mm. And no call, and that's something that Ed Branion talked about coming into this game. How the officials will call this game. Will they allow it to be a rough and tumble game, or will they call it close? Personally, I think thus far, Bob, they've done a great job handling this club, uh, these clubs. These clubs are both aggressive type teams, and I think the officials are doing a good job. And Ryan Levine has whistled for her third personal. Great shot here from above the basket. First. <laughs> the worst part about that is Levine took the worst of that. Well, and, and the problem there defensively, see, you got to move the legs quicker, beat the player to the spot. She was like a half step behind and picked up the foul. Fenner picks up her third personal, so all of a sudden Stroudsburg with a bit of foul difficulty here and Jen Clock will go to the line. Now that play by Levin too, Bob, you have a, you should give the offensive player, or should be a half step ahead of the offensive player. The ball's on the opposite side of the court. You must what we call cheat a little bit so you can beat the player to the spot. Failed to do it that time. Just the lack of uh, fundamentals defensively there by Levine. Doesn't happen often, but occasionally you get lax defensively. Levine will go take a break as Alicia Eisenberg checks into the Mountie lineup. Clock hits one of two, seven points for Jen, and it's a two-point game again. And here comes the pressure. Well, there's the trap area. She went right into it. That is Nancy Gulick, but somehow gets it away to Fenner. Crowl for three. Lisicki tried to save it, did not. It will stay with Stroudsburg. Well, Mountie's playing with a lot of confidence. They get uh, clear of the trap. Good move that time by Fenner, getting it to Kral. Kral with a lot of confidence, lets it fly from the perimeter. To Austin, low post, got it. Other working Lindsay Austin inside. She has four and we have a tie ball game. Lusicki at the other end for the lead again, no. And Fenner is able to keep it alive for Stroudsburg. Here comes Kral to the other end. Boy, she never brought that one up, ran right into Rachel Seganowicz, the freshman. Up ahead, Clock, who gets it, and the foul. It'll go against Eisenberg. See, what looked like advantage of Mounties in the transition-type game and a move by Crowell, but she loses a turnover. And look at the great pass by Lisicki to Clock. You talk about players and why she's all the uh, Mountain Valley Conference. You saw it there, not only effective that is from the shooting aspect of the game, but the passing game, Mary Lisicki. And the hard worker here on the line, that's 44, Jen Clock. A three-point play for Jen Clock. And again, a three-point game. Eisenberg for Austin. Eisenberg at the low post, having trouble finding the handle, and she'll be tied up by Amy Saganowicz. A good help defense by the Zephyrs. Eisenberg gets it in low. A lot of gold shirts are surround her in that low. Crowl for three, a thousand, and the tie. She can't get it. This one goes off of wine, and it will be Stroudsburg ball again. Battling much harder under their offensive boards in the second quarter, and now in this third quarter, the ball stays at the Mountie end. Set play on the inbounds play to free Gulick. Gulick comes up a little bit short. And another tie up, this time it will go to Whitehall. Valiant returns for Whitehall. Halloran had just come in for the Mounties. It's a three-point Whitehall lead. We are halfway through the third quarter. They drop it down for Balliot. And again, the rim not kind there. It will stay with Whitehall, however. Clock on the wing, drops it for Lasicki in the corner. That one comes out, and it's pulled away by Halloran, and Halloran will be fouled. It is Balliot who picks up her second personal, 
And already the fourth team foul on Whitehall. Okay, let's watch the pressure by the Zephyrs again. See how the Mounties handle it. Off the inbound, a good play by Clock to get a hand on it. And then Crowell is called for coming over the top to get it back. That's the first on Cindy. Very difficult pass to make over the top of Jen Clock as she's uh, kind of leaping up and down and uh, blocking your vision there. Crowell tried to get it over the top and then picks up the foul. Clock. Crowell defending. Here's Lasicki, the pull up, hits it. What a, what a nice stroke by Mary Lasicki, her first basket of the second half. Talk about technique, Bob, that's one thing, but coolness under fire. This girl doesn't even realize, I think she's playing in a championship game, and the game is this close. She's so cool out there. The pressure again hurting the Mounties. Watch the poise. Look, she gets the ball, so concentration, great square into the basket, great rotation on the ball. The inbound to Balliot, knocked away. Here comes Levine, who is checked back into the game. Up ahead, Gulick, a little bit too hard. This one will go off of, did Levine knock it out? Yeah, it's off Levine, it will be Whitehall basketball. Yeah, the amount is trying to push it up court. Did not have numbers, it was 3-2. Zephyrs there, Gulick did have the look, though. Lasicki steps wow. up and hits the three. Nobody stepped up to guard, so Lasicki nails her third three-pointer. You know, talking about big-time players, when it comes time, that is key times, you look to the big ones, and this one was a big one by Lasicki. In fact, the last two were. Now she almost does it defensively, but kind of ran out of bounds before she called time. Look at that shot. Just wow. stepped up in the middle of the scene. And that was like about, Bob, that was at least a step and a half behind the three-point line. And she had total control on that. No effort at all. I know guys that can't shoot that well from that far out under control. 22nd time out here for Stroudsburg. You know, and she had the, the, the uh, wise thinking there when she went out of bounds, trying to get the time, but already hit the floor. So great thinking on, uh, on Lasicki's part. Let's watch it here. Look at her, knock it away. Now watch her first thought. Look, she's trying to make the time out. She might have had it before she hit the floor. Official didn't see it, but that's great thinking. Intelligent player besides technique. And that was immediately following that three, so she knows to go to the transition from offense to defense that quickly. Absolutely, and she was back, way back behind that three-point arc and then decided, hey, she knows the pass is coming, timed it beautifully. Levine for three. Lasicki with the rebound. Whitehall on an 8-0 run after that 32-all tie. Well, and give credit, two threes by Lasicki. That's six of those eight. Kid can play. Lasicki up top. Gulick steps up quickly. She gets a screen. Finds Wine in the corner for three. And then a follow by Clark. Clock snuck in there. There were three red jerseys in there. Clock found the ball and put it up and in and will go to the line for the three-point play. It's Austin with the foul. Yeah, Jen Clock, see it. the tough player that she is, gets the ball. Austin, six-footer, tries to swat it away. But one nice thing that Clock did there was lean into the defense to pick up the foul. This is a scene playing with senior experience. 13 for Jen Clock, and the lead is back up to 11. This time they break it quickly. Gulick, Austin, had it tipped by Wine, and then off the rebound, Austin is called for the foul on Balliot. Yeah, where Maltes might have had an easy one, just pure hustle. Ch uh, turns things over for the Zephyrs, and that was Jen Wine on the fly. Austin looks like she has an uncontested layup, and Wine just comes in to knock it away. Wine on the drive, and the foul will go against Gulick for riding her. Nancy Gulick picks up her second personal. Didn't know a lot about this girl before the game started, Bob, as far as our information or my information in particular, but I'm very impressed by this senior, Jen Wine, an integrate part of this Whitehall Zephyr Club. 
They put her into a position she wasn't real comfortable with at the beginning of the season, the point guard spot. And she struggled early, but Coach Payton said that she's really started to come into her own here and feel a lot better with her role. A pair of free throws for Wine. And the run is 13, and another near steal by Clock on that pressure. Well, what a, a game of basketball, a game of runs, a game of momentum. You saw it swing. Zephyrs early, Mounties come back. The big M, the big Mo goes to the Zephyrs now, the latter part of this third. Whitehall by 13. Levine, what about the three? Tries to drop it inside to Halloran. It's taken away by Clock. Well, active hands defensively by the Zephyrs. Well, there's that X factor, Jen Clock. Lasicki steps up for another three. Clock hustles for the rebound. Loose ball will go to Stroudsburg. Hustle there. Mountie hits the floor. Some of the, fans, clock. some of the fans calling for a foul. My question would be, <laughs> who would you call it on? Both battling hard. Uh, good no call. And that was just great hustle by Clock. Halloran with the hook. Lasicki with the rebound. Up ahead, Clock in the lane and a foul called on Crowell. That clock looks and finds and sees a wine open underneath. Just couldn't quite find the handle on the basketball to get it to Jen Wine, the, but picks up the foul. That is the second on Cindy and the eighth on the Mounties. So clock will shoot one and one. We have nice balance on the Zephyr Club, but this girl here does such a great job both on the perimeter and her hustle inside. Aggressiveness off the boards, that's Jen Clock. And then you have Megan Bellion, she can hit the boards bomb. This is a uh, well-balanced uh, Zephyr Club. Clock six of seven from the line. There I go bragging on her again. <laughs> You've done that so many times. I have to stop that. Please let the girls alone. <laughs> Halloran high post. And Clock gets her hand on another. Yeah, just cut in the passing lane uh, on that uh, side pass there by Kral. Good job there by Clock. Coming down toward the one minute mark of the third quarter. It's a 14 point lead for Whitehall. It was tied moments ago. And a 14 point run broken by Nora Fenner. Well, I don't think you're going to see any quit in this Mountie club, that's for sure. The Zephyr's throwing his own defense at the Mounties now, but the good baseline move freed Fenner. And again, Whitehall will play for the last shot here. They got two chances at it at the end of the half and were not able to convert. Mom, she's so cool out there. There's Mary Lissick. I think she's going to fall asleep. She has the basketball out there. I mean, she's just, look at the poison this girl. She just stands there and uh, does she know she's really in a championship game? Wine. And you know what she Lissicky. does? You know what, what a good player does and what she does too? She lulls you to sleep. You know, right when you think she's relaxing, you saw a sudden move there. She frees herself suddenly. This is a great player. Amy Saganowicz for Jen Clock. It's a little bit too high for Jen. Yeah, if you're working the clock down for the last shot, your coach uh, paints and uh uh, that's a no no. You don't want to see that happen. Turn it over and get the uh, let the opposition have their opportunity. But sometimes that happens. You know, you start too soon. They're like 45 to 50 seconds left on that clock, and uh, just a little early to start that slowdown. Levine goes to the floor hard at the end of the third. That's it for three quarters of action. Whitehall has jumped out to a 46-34 lead. What are you doing here at ABE Car Care Center? I'm uh, having my machine winterized with ABE Car Care's 12-point winter checkup. Oh, they inspect your brakes, your battery, your tires, your wiper plates, the filter. 
everything. Yep, they get it ready for all that ice, snow, and cold weather that's coming. Well, you made a good decision to get it checked out before the bad weather gets here. You know me, save money in the long run. What do you do with all your money? I'm saving for my pot of gold. Go for the coal. You already got the pot. Nice. Ron Rossler, sheriff of uh, Lehigh County, and uh, with his son. And you know what, Bob? I, I didn't, I didn't know the sheriff before, but I've been going to these playoff games, especially in, in the games around lately. And I see this guy there every game with his son. Finally got to meet him, and they're the greatest of basketball fans. Believe me, love this game of b-ball. A 14-point run in the third quarter. Gives Whitehall the big lead again. Stroudsburg had tied it at 32. And a double dribble and another turnover for the Mounties. A little confused offensively now against that Zephyr zone. Important uh, first few minutes of this fourth quarter for the Mounties to make a run at this big uh, Zephyr lead. 15 Stroudsburg turnovers. Here's Wine from the free throw line. 10 points for Jen Wine. So three Zephyrs in double figures. And a foul called on Lasicki going over the top of Levine. Number 23, Let's watch Wine. See how well she ran her man off the screen there by clock. And that's a very effective screen by clock to free Wine. And Wine doing a great job for the Zephyrs. Again, one of those unsung heroes that you look for in a big game like this. Talk about your Lasickies, talk about your clocks, but there come the Wines. Just like fine wine, Robert. Just like a fine wine. Here's that full court pressure again. Gulick for three, got it. Well, you want to make your run early. As we just mentioned, you're going to do it that way, and that's Gulick from the perimeter. Her 46th three-pointer of the season. It's a 12-point game. Line drops it for Amy Sagano. It's blocked by Nora Fenner. Great recovery defensively by Fenner. What she did there was had to stop basketball and it came back quickly. Wine with the scoop shot. It's a 13 point lead. Levine for three. No, Fenner there to clean it up. Nora Fenner with eight points. And if you're going to come back, you can't trade baskets. You've got to make a defensive stop. Very important here for the, Zephyr, uh, for the Mounties. Clock at the other end and the foul goes on Halloran. Tempo picking up quite a bit now as the Mounties go in that full court pressure, trying to create turnovers. Lock with 15. Hudak returns for Whitehall. And Austin comes back in for the Mounties. Clock seven of nine from the line. 16 points for Jen Clock. The lead is back to 13 for Whitehall. 6.20 remaining here in the fourth. Gulick has it knocked away. And it will stay with Stroudsburg. She probably takes the point in that offense against the zone. She takes it over to, to Gulick, and they've done this a few times. They don't get the good passing angle to get it down to the wing or the side. What they have to do is take the ball out to the side, maybe on one or two dribbles, then get it down to the sideline. Gulick for three. That one rolls off. Long rebound tipped out by Lasicki. So it will be Mountie basketball. What they have to look for also, Bob, and against that defense, which they aren't, they're working the perimeter again, but work it inside like that to maybe a Lindsay Austin. Good turnaround move. Six for Austin. And it's back to an 11-point game. Here's some full court pressure by the Mounties, causing a turnover. Crowell for a thousand. No. 
Gulick with the rebound, though. Austin in the corner thought about the outside shot. Here's Levine. And the Mounties reset. Okay, change of defense by the Zephyrs. Now go back to man. Again for a thousand crawl. Doesn't get it. I wonder if she's pressing a little bit, Bob. Yeah, and looking at the perimeter, maybe once too often. Again, where's that aggressive offense to go to the iron? Clock on the drive. No, the second one blocked by Fenner. Kral up ahead. Gulick trying to lead her, and Gulick has to run it down. Good defensive transition by Lasicki uh, and uh, Hudak to get back and stop the break uh, by the Mounties. Levine. And a blocking foul called on Lasicki. So Mary has picked up her third personal. I think really, Bob, what the Mounties got away from was this type of movement by Levine. You saw that aggressive move to the iron to pick up the foul. They were relying on that perimeter shot for most of that the third quarter and early in this fourth. Fenner. Levine tried to get that quick out of bounds play. Here's Fenner at the low post. Not bad movement there. In and out type movement. Kick it back out. You don't have it inside. And Fenner can't hold on. It will go back to Whitehall. And defense by the Zephyrs to double up Fenner inside and create the turnover. Here is Lasicki. Runs off to the wing. Inside for Balliot, and she'll go to the line. Austin picks up the foul, and that will be her fourth. Well, you know, most of the time, great basketball players never run in straight lines. What we mean by that, of course, if it's wide open, you go for it. But what Lasicki does so well, you saw the screen. She took her man down about one step to the left, then comes off the screen, this freezer. Then when the double comes up or the switch occurs, what she does so well, sees the open person, makes a great bounce pass. So he saw a great sequence by a great offensive player there. Mm, Ed Brannion calls a timeout. He knows that time is getting short here. And his team down 11. They've started to shoot a little bit more from the outside. Do you think they've gotten out of what they wanted to do? And the thing that got them back into the game mainly pushing it down low. Absolutely, absolutely, Bob. I think that when they made the run and they came back so well, they were more aggressive going to the iron and they pushed it more inside. I thought they were going to go to it when they looked for Austin and she made the nice turnaround. But again, they would just uh, rely on that perimeter shot or did rely on that perimeter shot too much. You know, if you're having a good night is one thing. But if they aren't going, got to look for something else. You know, if the front door is locked, you got to look for the open window. You know what I mean? So if that's not going, look for something else. They failed to look early enough, I think, for the inside game. They have to look for it here. On the other hand, how impressed do you have to be about Whitehall defensively mostly tonight? They have gotten their hands on just about every ball tonight. Yeah, and, and they changed defenses there, kind of confused the Mounties. They went from their normal man, that is their defense, I think, normally, went into that zone, and that was effective. I think it confused the Mounties offensively enough uh, for the Zephyrs to come back and uh, build up their lead. Valiant misses the first one. Too used to doing night games. <laughs> I should say this afternoon. Yeah, well, that, you know, and, uh, and I was going to ask, and I, uh, when we started, I was wondering if it has any effect on the kids as far as their timing, as far as playing is concerned. You know, when I was their age, I was just getting up about 12 <laughs> noon. When I'm my age, I'm just about <laughs> getting up at noon. I, I'm in that crack of noon club. It's an early morning for me today. <laughs> Gulick steps up, it's a two. A training table is usually a steak. In this case, it's got to be a bowl of Rice Krispies, right? <laughs> it's a nine-point game. Fenner gets her hand on it. It's Crawl with the steal. Rifles a pass for Gulick, who can't finish, and it's pulled away by Balliot again. Your attention, please, for the members of the Mountain Valley Conference, Great matchup there. That's Crawl and uh, Lissicki. At the West End of the gymnasium. Wine outside. Here's Clock. Wine on the drive, and before the shot, Fenner picks up the foul, and that will be the fourth on Nora Fenner. So she has four, so does Lindsay Austin. And Ryan Levine has three. I oh, can't say enough about the, that girl right there. That's Jen Wine. Again, pushing the basketball inside and picking up the foul. And, uh, you know, your concentration again on Lissicki defensively and maybe a clock. 
You can't let a girl like this free. Again, what makes good ball clubs, right? Can't concentrate on one or two individuals. Wine hits the first. Whitehall in the double bonus, so Wine shooting two here. Three for three from the line this afternoon. Nice rebound by Balliot, though. Balliot able to post up in there, get the long rebound, and put it back up and in. And Levine shaking up here again. She's been banged around. I think she, well, she uh, got hit in the midsection and got the wind knocked out of her here. Yeah, we'll, we'll see it there. That's a Megan Balliot. There was a long bound off that missed foul shot then was able to come up with the board that is Balliot. And then she comes back, lowers the shoulder into a, a Ryan. That's tough play inside. Not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. 55-43, mm. it is a... 12-point lead for Whitehall, and there is Ryan. What a battler she is, and uh, has had a great career for these uh, Mounties, and uh, likes to mix it up inside. This is not unusual for Ryan. She's had her share of floor burns, and uh, she's been banged up pretty well over the years. Bob, something we haven't talked about is um, what this game means as far as uh, districts is concerned. The uh, winner of this game will end up up at the uh, top of districts. Of course, the uh, the champions go to the head of the field. So in girls, it's either going to be Stroudsburg or Whitehall. The winner of this game will be the top seed in District 11. And what that means is a bye. There are seven teams in the girls' quad A in District 11, which means team number one goes right to the semifinal. So that also on the line here tonight, yeah, this afternoon, excuse me. That's very important, of course. And uh, you get your chance to rest, work on things that you maybe normally won't, wouldn't be able to do when you have a tighter schedule, so to speak, and have to play more games, better preparedness. And you've got to talk about the fine job that Todd uh, Payton has done the first year with these, uh, with these Zephyrs. Mm -hmm. Taken to a possible Mountain Valley Championship. Mm -hmm. Well, what a fine uh, round of applause by Orion Levine as she heads to the Mountie bench and a well-deserved round of applause. This girl has battled mm -hmm. throughout the game and uh, going to get a little breather here. Stroudsburg has never won a league championship. In fact, they've only been in a final game one other time back in 1981 when they lost to Palmerton in the Centennial League Championship. Whitehall has not won a league title since 1989 in the East Penn. So each of these teams looking for that first one, one ever, another in a long, long time. Fenner at the baseline, a little bit too hard there. It is Eisenberg battling in a crowd of gold jerseys, a rebound, but then she throws it away. And it will be Whitehall basketball with 3.14 left in the fourth, and the Zephyr's up by 12. Good rebound by Eisenberg, strong move inside, took it to the base, tried to get it out to Fenner, but the pass went awry. Now it's a chance for Whitehall to work a little clock here. The one up on the wall, I mean, not the one on the floor. And here is Jen Clock. Lasicki outside and thinks, okay, let's keep the clock running here. Again, Stroudsburg is over the second limit, over 10 fouls, so every shot from here on in, two shots. Lasicki oh. drops it inside for Balliot. What a look by Mary Lasicki. Well, again, you think it was she was going to be lax with the bat, makes the quick move, gets the baseline, feels the pressure, great dish. They exchange turnovers here. Wow. <laughs> and to the... Baseline, Crowell gets it, and she'll have a chance for her thousands from the line. And talking about great moves, let's look at that one. That's Crowell, around the defense, scoop-type shot underneath the extended hands of two Zephyrs, way high off the glass. What a move. And there's a thousand. 
A thousand points for Sydney Crowell. Right on the button. Well, we saw this with Ryan Levine two games ago. Now teammates turn. Sydney Crowell. Standing ovation by both sides here at Memorial Gymnasium at Liberty. Always an honor in high school basketball to achieve that thousand point milestone. Uh, we've been around for three this oh, year. Oh, wow. We've had our share, haven't we? Two, two with Stroudsburg, Levine, and Crowell, and Lacey Gonzalez of Panther Valley in our opening game. Please report to the locker room area at the west end of the gymnasium. Jonathan McDonald from Liberty High School. Tim Massacre from Parker High School. Brent Sirmas from Panther High School. Ty Burke from Stroudsburg High School. Wine. Alex Pleasant Valley High School. With those... And Lusicki. Yeah, what, what you have to do there, normally Zephyrs will pass and go away from the ball wide to prevent doubling up of the basketball. Every once in a while, they come over, set the screen in their delay. That's the time the defense has to jump out and double quickly. Right now, getting close right there. They bring the basketball over, and then you double up and try to get the turnover. Eisenberg comes over and commits the foul on Wine. Eisenberg's third. And a timeout for Stroudsburg. 57-46. Whitehall leads with a minute and a half left. The Mountain Valley Conference trophy has just been walked out to behind the scorer's table. We had a chance to see the presentation of that following this game. And, of course, the Mountain Valley Boys Championship will be on the line immediately following live here on both Blue Ridge Communications TV 13 and Service Electric Super 2. And here's what we talked about with Mary Lasicki before the game. She is not just a good scorer. Yeah, the versatility of, of Mary Lasicki, that great dish, she feels the heat of the defense and then finds the open person so well. Another great play right following that was Cindy Kral. Strong move to the basket in that super scooper. <laughs> Way high off the glass. Mm -hmm. It will be Wine at the line. Jen Wine has done a nice job tonight oh, running the show, terrific. helping her and Mary Lasicki really uh, alternate duties at that point, but Wine's done a nice job. Yeah, they, they seem to know each other well out there, and uh, she's the player you need, Bob. She is that uh, other factor that we were talking about. You called Jen Clock the X factor. I think you got to throw a little X in front of that Wine name, too. Mm -hmm. And another great defensive play by Clock and Wine and the entire Whitehall team, and that's been the story this afternoon, is that full court pressure defense and even the, the uh, front court defense. Here's a foul on Fenner hacking Clock. And of course that's happened a few times uh, as we've seen again Clock uh, being left open on the inbounds play. They're actually going to call that one on Lindsey Austin, so Austin has fouled out of the game. 18 turnovers in the game committed by Stroudsburg and something Ed Brannion did not want to see, something specific he did not want to see coming into the game. You know, Bob, he talked about three important factors, keeping Mary's, Mary Lasicki in check, not turning the ball over and handling that pressure, and also the rebounding. Yeah, and he, he knew the Zephyr Club pretty well because uh, all three factors came into play tonight. Lisicki did a great job. Also, and again, did I say this afternoon? Let's get that uh, straight. This afternoon, that is. So hard to remember that. But anyway, uh, the, and the pressure defense hurt them early. Game of runs. Now it's hurt them late. And rebound. And the Zephyr's strong here at the end under the boards. Uh, Mounties mounted their attack in the middle periods and were much stronger under the boards and uh, kind of failed to do that end of it here in the fourth. Here's that full court pressure. Levine is able to break it and come across. Gulick for three. 
And a foul off the rebound, and it will send Lisicki to the line. What you have to like about the Zephyr Club, one of the many things that you have to like about the Zephyr Club is their calmness or coolness under pressure because Mounties came at them a couple times, made their runs, looked like they were going to overcome that lead by the Zephyrs and the calmly and coolly they hung in there, particularly the girl you see at the foul line now. She does such a great job with the basketball under pressure. Misses the first. One off, one on, one off, one on, and one off. That's the story at the line for Mary Lasicki. And of course, she's a senior. She won't be back next year, and that's one of the things. She has senior experience. Uh, yeah, she's uh -huh. got senior experience, but guess I understand, what? I understand, I understand. Everybody, everybody just <laughs> cringed when they double-checked and said, wait a second, yeah, she's, she's a, a junior. junior. I know. Yes, she is. How about that, only a junior? Locke picks up her fourth. See lots of Mary Lasicki. Mm. And we'll see lots of Playoffs this team coming I think. up in the next year for sure. And I think we'll see lots of this team next year. Balliot, just a junior. Clock will leave, but they have a freshman in Rachel Saganowicz who sees plenty of time. Amy Saganowicz is a junior. 11 points for Cindy. They're going to have a, a, a good nucleus, great nucleus coming back. There's no question about it uh, next year. But, Bob, we're talking about next year. These Zephyrs are going to do some damage as they go into the playoffs. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion. And they'll chase, and I don't know if they're going to foul here. With under a minute left, so it looks like Whitehall will get its first championship since 1989 when it was back in the East Penn. Stroudsburg, I think, just does not want to give up a basket here. But they figure this one is in the books. So Whitehall will keep it going. They open two and three. Mary Lasicki hurt her finger, something they thought was a multiple fracture. It turned out to be just a dislocation, in fact, an aggravation of a previous injury. She comes back, surprising many people, has a huge season. Whitehall goes on an 18 and one run, 18 wins in 19 games, and Jen Wine finishes it off with an exclamation point, a three-pointer, and Whitehall wins the Mountain Valley Championship 65 to 47 over Stroudsburg. Now, Stroudsburg makes several runs at the Zephyrs, but cool, calm, and collected. They, they just hung in there, did workmanlike work, and particularly with Mary Lasicki at the helm at that point situation, just the held back the charging Mounties. So Whitehall wins it 65 to 47. Whitehall, the 1999-2000 Mountain Valley Conference Girls Basketball Champions. And a great uh, game that it was. And we talk about basketball as a game of momentum. A game of runs. You saw it here this afternoon. And the Mounties did a good job at coming at, at the Zephyrs. We see the difference, the uh, nine-point lead in that first quarter and the run that the Mounties had in that second quarter, outscoring the Zephyrs. And then again, failing to do the job in the third quarter and just hang in there in the fourth. And of course, big win by these Whitehall Zephyrs. Jen Clock and Jen Wine lead all scorers with 18. And Mary Lasicki, another big afternoon, 15 points, three three-pointers. I'm impressed with Jen Clock, though. She was one who battled for rebounds, battled for baskets, and battled defensively. Well, yeah, you have to be impressed by several Zephyrs, Bob, but she is the, uh, a workhorse, a blue-collar type player uh, for the Zephyrs. You know, it, Mary Lasicki, if you can compare them both, she's more of the executive type. You know, she handles the ball, she looks the scene over, she makes the decisions out there. 
But it when it comes to going after the basketball, doing it aggressively, then you look for the one that carries the the lunch pail, that uh -huh. is, and that's a Jen clock. But hey, talk a little bit about Jen Wine doing her thing too, doing her share of uh, scoring and hustling inside uh, for the Zephyrs. The runner-up trophy to Stroudsburg. And now the Mountain Valley Championship Trophy. And the Whitehall Zephyrs out to receive their Mountain Valley Championship trophy. And a very, very happy Zephyr group and a happy coach, Ted, uh, Todd Painton. You know, I said, as we alluded to earlier too, you know, you work so hard in summer leagues and going to the summer camps and going to clinics that is the girls and the coaches and then preseason right before the season and then practice and you work so hard and this is one of the goals you achieve next is districts of course but the league championship so whitehall wins it 65 to 47 over stroudsburg to win the mountain valley championship we'll talk to the victors in a moment Fast, exciting, family entertainment, professional basketball, Stabler Arena, the Pennsylvania Valley Dogs. 15 home games starting Saturday, April 29th, featuring head coach Daryl Dawkins. For season ticket information or group outings, call 610-250-9800. Look who's here, it's Elmo. Elmo doesn't think he's on Sesame Street anymore. <laughs> Starring in his very first movie, you can see right in your home. It's the biggest adventure a little monster ever had. The Adventures of Elmo in Grouchland is in demand. Order in the fun, you rule. Celebrate 2000 brought to you by the corporate partnership of Service Electric, Brown Dob Auto Dealerships, Easton Hospital, and the Express Times. In 1948, John Walson ran a cable down into town, and cable TV was born. Today, cable brings the internet to you 50 to 100 times faster than a phone line. It offers more high-quality educational and children's programming than anyone. Cable is investing $11 billion a year advancing technology, bringing you better service and better programming. John Walson didn't know where cable would lead, but he'd like where it's going. Cable TV, wired to the future. Whitehall 65, Stroudsburg 47. The Whitehall Zephyrs win the Mountain Valley Girls Championship this afternoon at Memorial Gym. 
And we'll talk to the Zephyrs in a moment. Right now, uh, the Mount Valley is announcing their all-conference teams. As we mentioned a moment ago, Jen Wine, 18 points. Jen Clock, 18 points. Mary Lisicki had 15 and Cindy Kroll and Nancy Gulick had 11 and 12, respectively. Bob Milkvey is down with Todd Payton. Let's go to Bob. Bob Milkvey on court with coach, successful coach and happy coach and championship coach Todd Payton. Todd, first-year coach, how does it feel? Um, you know, the kids have spoiled me, you know, being a first-year coach. Uh, you know, they just responded really well to what we tried to do this year. Uh, we were a new staff. Um, you know, lots of high expectations, and early on we struggled a little bit, but they just have responded so well, and we have uh, a much more balanced team this year, and uh, it just seemed to really work out today for us. When you talk about balance, you sure did. I think you had two players uh, uh, scoring 18 points, that is uh, clock and wind, yeah. and then you had a, a little girl out there that can handle the point for you, kind of a player, uh, Mary Lissicki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's... You know, but when she sees that things aren't going well, she'll come down and take control. She made some great shots for us in the third quarter, especially. Uh, you know, Megan Valley was a couple free throws away from double figures. So, you know, we can get that kind of production out of four kids. Uh, we hope to be successful, and they, they certainly stepped up tonight. And one thing I have to say about Mary, too, and maybe you can uh, allude to this, is the fact that uh, she probably could uh, score more than her 14 points a game that she has all year. I understood before I came in, I haven't seen Mary play the first time I saw her, but she is an unselfish player. She, it's, it's almost to a fault. We, we wanted her to get up over 15, 16 points a game and still be able to distribute the ball. She just as soon, you know, score 10 and have 20 assists. That's the kind of kid she is. And uh, we're trying to work on her scoring some more. She's been more aggressive in the second half, and we're still able to get some other kids scoring. But Mary is very unselfish, um, almost, you know, with her kind of skill and ability, almost too unselfish. And talk a little bit about the Jen Claw hard worker for you, kind of the blue collar worker. She's she's the kid that we have, you know, that we were hoping that could work on Cindy Crow from Strasburg, and she did a great job on her tonight. Cindy's such a good player, and, uh, you know, she's a key defender. She keys our press. You know, she's scrapping. She's on the floor. She's our X factor. She's the, the missing piece, you know. And so. your unsung hero, another one, hey, how about a Jen Wine? She's, she does this. You know, she gets on a roll. She gets it's aggressive offensively. Uh, she had a buzzer beater against Easton just a week and a half ago over there to beat them, a three-pointer. So it's been that kind of year for her as a senior. You, you kind of hope for that for a senior. So. Yeah, Coach, congratulations. Yeah. Go in there and celebrate yeah, with okay. the kids. Great right. job. Bob Milfi, of course. We're going to have some of the players now. We have Mary Lasicki coming up. Mary, great job. Thanks. Heard a lot about you coming in here. I played a little basketball in my time, but I tell you what, you did a fine job and expect big things for you in the playoffs. And uh, um, what do you think was the key to this game? We just played hard. We were really ready for this game. And we never gave up. They came back. We just never gave up. We kept making shots, playing defense, and that's what helped us. And, and one thing I noticed too, Mary, so cool under pressure. They made the runs at you. You stood out beyond that three-point line. I think you hit two, two key ones right in a row. Yeah. I was working on that this summer, so it worked out good. And while we're talking here, we don't want to get involved with another basketball game. We were, you were out here long enough, and I think you'd like to go in there and celebrate a little bit. But I, I want to say to you, you did a fine job out there, and uh, uh, looks like things look good down the line. Yeah. What do you think your chances are as you go into the playoffs and into the district uh, situation? Uh, we'll be good. We're going to keep working hard, get ready for each team that comes up. Now it's just going to be tough every game, so we got to keep working hard. Well, let me tell the fans, you're going to see a lot of this girl in the future, not only this year, but next year, and then down the line, this girl is a player, very impressed by her play. This is uh, Mary Lasicki, and uh, go in and celebrate with the rest of the girls. Congratulations, yep. Mary. We'll see you again. Uh, Bob Milkfee down in court to talking to a uh, happy coach, Plainton, uh, Painton, and also one Mary Lasicki, who we're impressed with, and we'll go back to Bob Capasso. So Whitehall wins the MVC championship. The Zephyrs will be the top seed in District 11 4A. Whitehall goes to 21 and 4 on the year. Stroudsburg to 20 and 6.
Stay tuned for Stroudsburg and Whitehall part two. It's the boys championship live both here on Blue Ridge and Service Electric. The final score in the girls championship game, Whitehall 65, Stroudsburg 47. Great job by the Service Electric crew this afternoon. For Bob Milkby and the whole crew, I'm Bob Capasso. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the boys game.